What's up, guys? How's it going? It's Wyatt here. I had a question asked. Um, I think his name was Revolutions X or something like that. Some weird name like that. <laughs> he asked me about, you know, what to take into account in drop tunings. You know, drop tune guitars and low tunings and shit like that. Okay. There's a lot of things to kind of take into account when doing this. One, it depends on what tuning you're going to, how low you're actually tuning. If you're going to like drop D, C sharp, C, um, you know, any normal size guitar like this is basically like a Gibson scale. It's 24 and three quarters. Um, it uh, it handles the drops down to drop C pretty pretty well. Um, this guitar specifically too has a little bit thicker neck, which I honestly like. I'm not huge on the really thin necks because they just feel noodly to me. Um, you you're gonna definitely want a guitar that has a strong neck in it. At least uh, you know if it is going to be a thin neck, you know a really thin neck. Um, like Ibanez, they have super thin necks, but they'll reinforce them sometimes with Babinga stripes, which Babinga is a stronger wood, kind of makes it a little bit more firm. Because those, the tension in the strings and stuff, it's going to be putting a lot of pressure on that neck. And, um, <clears throat> they also have necks out there with graphite reinforcements too, which are fucking awesome. Like, that's a amazing idea. Those are virtually indestructible. They're fucking amazing. I'd love to have one myself. Um, that works. You need to make sure when you, because you're going to want to go to lower, lower gauge strings, um, for, you know, C sharp and drop C tunings. I have a custom gauge. Mine, you can, it, I play with DR strings flat. Like, Dunlop also has really, really good strings. They, you know, but Dunlop just sort of came out, and I'm just kind of discovering those. Those heavy core strings are awesome for fucking drop tunings. Amazing. They handle it a lot better. It just works. It just they and they sound really good too. Feel really good too. That's that's one of the most important things to me is the feel of the string, the way they feel, because they don't all feel the same. They just don't. You can tell the difference in strings. If you've been playing long enough, but um, I play the like this. My my custom size now is offered with a uh, Alexi Leho. Basically, uses pretty much what I was having to order from Dr. Like he basically uses the same size strings, which is like ten, thirteen, seventeen, uh, thirty. 44, 56. So, you know, the high strings are nice and um, malleable. You know what I mean? Like, they, they bend really well. They're not super heavy. But when you get down to these low strings, and especially me, because I have a... I like to fucking dig in. Like, really get a nice, growly, nasty tone to it. I love that. I need those thicker strings, because it handles my palm muting better. And when you ring out on a note, you you know, when you have thinner strings, they kind of tend to go wow, like, you know, you don't want that kind of shit. You want nice, tight, articulate structure in your, in your voicings and stuff. Um, another thing, yeah, what I was going to say is the, the nut, you need to make sure that you slot out the, the slots shave them down so they actually fit your bigger strings because that's one reason you know people have tuning problems and stuff is they get kind of hooked up in the nut and um, you know not just greasing them is not gonna you know take care of that you need to really open them up a, just a little bit you don't want them so big that the string can the string has play inside of them because that'll fuck everything up 
but you want it just enough where your string can slide through perfectly, really easy. Um, I use Big Ben's Nut Sauce too, so it, I mean I have no tuning problems ever, ever. Um, oh, and look, my headstock's angled. No tuning problems. But uh, you also want a good tuning peg themselves too. Grover tuners are fucking awesome. They hold tune like crazy. Um, I've never had any problems with them. Matter of fact, locking tuners are, you know, they'll work too. Any kind of locking tuner, really. I mean, they have Grover locking tuners too, <clears throat> which are not, they, they lock in the way of when you set the tuning, they're set. Like, it, it won't move unless you move it. So these are locking tuners. Then they have the dual locking tuners where you lock the string in, you know, like a normal locking tuner, but the tuning pegs themselves lock when you tune the strings. Um, yeah, you're not going to want to use a guitar that's a normal size scale like this for any tunings that are really lowered in drop C. Like when you get to B and A, it's just, it, it's just the way it is. You kind of, you need to get a baritone guitar or a semi-baritone guitar. This guitar is a semi-baritone guitar. It's 27 scale. Normal guitars 24 and 3 quarters. Fenders are 25 something. Can't from can't remember. But um this is a 27 scale. And this is what I use for you know going down to like B and A and low fucking tunings, like just really, really low. Um because of the longer scale, it just adds more tension to the string, which makes it work better right now i don't have this my my normal like drop drop tuning strings on this dr has a new set of strings called the ddt ddt strings or drop down tuning strings and they range from like 50 something to all the way up to like 70 something like they're fucking big they got some big strings what i use for the a tunings i think it's like 65 to 13 I have the fucking pack in one of my guitar cases, but they're all set up back behind my guitars back here, so I don't really want to get into them, but, you know, you're going to want strings like that. The cool thing about those new DR heavy core strings is, you know, they use, this is the same size wrap wire, but the core inside of it is a little bit fatter, so you kind of just get more tone. Like, it's just more tone, and um, they're stronger. And they just, they, they kind of have a little bit more tension to them, so it, it just, it works right. You know, it, they're basically purpose-built for drop tuning. I don't know how low they actually go with those, um, because I just started using them. Like, uh, this, my ESP guitar... This is strung up with those, with the Dunlop strings. And they're fucking awesome. They feel great. Um, but, uh, yeah, super low tunings, you're going to want either baritone or semi-baritone. Um, I prefer semi-baritone because baritone guitars, you know, are like 28 scale to 29 scale. You know, they're fucking long. It's like playing a damn jazz bass or something. It's crazy, but, uh. This one's 27 scale, and it works amazing for me. This is actually the first, like, real nice guitar I ever got. And the cool thing is, is this one was, you know, um, more of a prototype for what they have now. It's the very original um, Schecter C1 EX, and uh, they don't, they make, they still, I think they still make the Schecter C1 EX, the difference is, um, well, I think they come with different pickups. This came with Duncan Design pickups, so I slapped in an EMG. And uh, the newer ones don't have all these these fret markers. It just, I think it just has the one at the, the 12th fret. And the newer ones have binding up the headstock and, and all around the neck. This one doesn't. 
I like this one better. It's one of a kind. I can't find any of these anywhere. I mean, I looked up as much as I can about this guitar, and I can't find fucking anything. It's all the newer ones. Like, they have no info, info on this one. This one was the third one made, too. It's got a little three up here at the top of the neck. So, I love this guitar. This is my bitch. This is what I use for all my low, low tunings. Right now, I'm just using it for drop C and shit, so I've got my normal 56 to 10 gauge on them. Um, besides that, pickups are another thing. And, you know, people, once again, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a taste sort of thing, and it's more of a preference deal. But, to me, and to... 99% of fucking metal players on the planet that play with drop tunings that actually know drop tunings because that's what they play in. We prefer active pickups. Active pickups just kind of bring out more of the tone and it kind of, they cut better. Because when you get to those really low frequencies, most pickups aren't made to handle that low of frequency. So they tend to kind of muffle and break up. Whereas these don't. And there's actually the Seymour Duncan EMT or MT whatever um, blackouts pickups. Those are purpose built for drop tunings and big strings. So um, I guess those are amazing. I haven't gotten to try them personally. Like I've I've heard them and everything, but I haven't really gotten to like put it on my own rig and you know fuck around with it for a while. I was thinking about maybe buying a set of those and slapping them in one of my guitars, but who knows. Um, yeah, that's another thing. So fat strings, baritone guitar, or semi-baritone. Um, if not, your guitar better have a fucking reinforced neck, because you get a neck that's noodly, it's not going to hold that tune worth a shit. And... I mean, you're going to have a lot of tension on that, you know, especially on a shorter scale. It's going to be pretty crazy. Another thing, and I'm going to make another video, like really getting into my, my rig and how I use everything and how I utilize what I use, because some people seem to be misconstruing like my gear and what I actually do use. Um, the best thing when you're drop tuning, don't oversaturate the gain on your amp. I mean, yeah, you're going to want some gain so you get the punch and the, you know, that chunky feel for it and shit. But when you oversaturate it, those low frequencies, they're just going to take over and it's going to become mush and you're not going to be able to distinguish any note from another one because those low tunings, it just you need to have a, a clear frequency going. So roll back the gain just a tad. What I do, and this is my the best weapon on the planet for lower tunings, this Maxon OD808 pedal. It's a little spendy. And um, just to let everyone know, this is actually the original Tube Screamer. This was be this, The Maxon OD808 was made before the actual TS808 by Ibanez. Ibanez copied Maxon, because Ibanez is a sister company, so this pedal was made first. This is the original Tube Screamer. What you do with this, on your gain setting, you know, and most metal players, we play with a lot of bass rolled into our, our EQ, okay? That tends to get flubby on the lower tunings and shit. What you do with this is you roll the gain completely off on the pedal. Just turn the gain off. Have the output or the balance, whatever. On this, it's called the balance. On any other overdrive, it'd be output. Crank that all the way up. Output all the way up. Gain all the way down. Tone wherever you want it. I kind of have it further forward so it's a little bit more treble, like a little bit more treble bite. What that does is it creates a natural compression. It cuts out all the flub from your low end, where you would normally get... It's nice and... It's... it's It cuts better, and it, it cuts out that that shitty 
flub in the low end and makes it a nice punchy low end, which is perfect. That's what you want for heavier music and stuff, and drop tunings especially. Um, that's another one of the secret weapons. Um, I have the... I have the Maxon OD-808, and that's my main weapon. Um, the backup for that is the uh, Zach Wilde Overdrive, the MXR. And uh, honestly, I fucking it sounds almost as good. Like, it really does. It sounds just about as good as the Maxon. And, uh, but I have that one rolled out a little bit different, so when I hit to the clean channel... I can have sort of a bluesy tone over top, so that's why I have that one. I don't necessarily have them both running at the same time ever. Like, there's really no need for that. But the Maxon one on my gain setting, that pedal is running all the time. When you hear the distortion on on my shit, that pedal is running. It just it it boosts your signal just a little, creates that natural compression, and cuts out the flub. And it just, it brings out the harmonic overtones. You guys want to know, you know, how I get those really fucking awesome squeals, the screams and shit. That's it. It brings out the, the harmonic overtones like crazy. I mean, I can hit the harmonics and shit otherwise, but they don't really scream like they do when, if I don't have this pedal on. It, this pedal is just a dream. It's amazing. Another thing with drop drop tunings, low tunings, uh, because of the those frequencies, um, you're gonna want some kind of noise suppression. Like, it's just kind of a must. Most metal players were playing pretty loud, and it tends to get a little noisy. So uh, I have the original Boss NS2 noise suppressor, which that was before they started making them with inferior connective. You know pieces they started making them with like i can't i fucking can't remember but they just the newer ones just suck the tone out of your out of your guitar i hate them but these old ones were they're amazing like i'm so glad that i i got this when i did i had another one but it got stolen at a gig that i played at a long time ago fuck i think it was another band that i played with like that we played with stole it because i i went i took i was we were hauling the shit out to the freaking van or whatever and come back in to grab my pedal because that was all i was using at the time i was just clicked straight to my fucking amp and then i had a noise suppressor pedal going that was it i didn't have any effects nothing like i just like straight up noise and uh someone had fucking stolen that and i was like god damn it so i got that one and, um, this one I've kept a very watchful eye on. But, um, yeah, so, I think we covered everything. Um, you know, bigger gauge strings, depending on what tuning you're playing in. And, it, you know, you kind of got to get a feel for it yourself. I mean, I'm just giving you kind of tips, you know, what I do. You got to get it, you got to get the feel for it yourself. Um. Baritone guitars, reinforced necks, um, nice overdrive pedal, <laughs> and uh, the rest of it's in your hands. <laughs> That's about all I can say. The rest of the tone is all right here. Like you're not, there's not any magic shit that you're gonna get to make you sound amazing. It's really all in the hands. That's. That's your biggest asset right there is your fucking hands. So, um, hopefully this was helpful. And, uh, like I said, I'll be making a in-depth video about my gear and like what I use, how I utilize what I use and, you know, shit like that, what I actually have and why I use it and where it is. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.